it's another week of Into the Light and Season of the Wish. So let's go over those brand new weapons, weekly reset info, last week's juicy twid, and much more. Today, all players can go pick up the Brave Weapon quests at our site to get access to the reprised Mountaintop Grenade Launcher and Midnight Coup Hand Cannon. Upon completion, you'll get their curated roles, which aren't half bad, as well as the ability to attune to them, making it much easier to farm them. To quickly complete those quests, just head into easy, high add density activities like the Green Room and the Whisper Mission, Grasp of Avarice's Entrance, or just use them in Onslaught and Strikes. Additionally, you can now complete the second part of the Whispers of the Taken quest, granting the No Distraction perk to Whisper of the Worm, as well as uncover a couple more of those hidden oracles. And then make sure you don't forget about the free weekly gift of Bright Dust in the Eververse store. Now for our normal recent information, enjoy both bonus reputation for the Vanguard and double Nightfall rewards. In the Ops playlist, you have Solar and Strand Surges, and the weekly Nightfall is Hypernet Current, featuring Unstoppable and Overload Champions, Stasis and Solar Surges, Arc Threat, and Overcharge Grenade Launcher, with the active Nightfall weapon being the amazing Warden's Law Aggressive Burst Hand Cannon. In the Crucible, your weekly playlists are Normal Control, Team Scorched, Clash, and Checkmate Survival. In Onslaught, this week's overcharged weapons are all grenade launchers and glaives. Those looking to farm some endgame rewards, the featured raid is Root of Nightmares, the dungeon has finally rotated to Ghosts of the Deep, and the exotic mission is Vox Obscura. In the Crota's End Raid, the third encounter challenge, Equal Vessels, is active, tasking you to pass the chalice in the same order amongst your whole fire team. Those players looking to unlock exotic armor and farm some multi perk loot, this is the weekly rotation of Legend and Master Law sectors, featuring Stasis and Solar Surges. Over on Neomuna, the Vex Incursion Zone is in Ahimsa Park, the Partition Mission is Ordnance, and the Campaign Mission is Desperate Measures. Lastly, Dares of Eternity is in Loot Rotation 4, featuring gear from Season of the Lost. With that, on to the news. Today, Update 7.3.6 rolled out, which applied Crucible Quitter penalty account-wide, not character-based, increased the initial drop rates of Tusk of the Boar and Multimach, fixed the issues of players missing the portal, thus missing the purchase phase in Onslaught, fixed the cheese and bugs regarding the oracles and the exotic Whisper mission granting unintended upgrades, and fixed the unlimited uptime bug with the Cascade Point perk. Last week, in case you missed it, Bungie released an article giving more details on Prismatic and how it all works. Article is linked down below, or click the link for my video breakdown. Now the TWID held some juicy information on Pantheon and the HUD UI redesign. Pantheon will be a raid boss gauntlet starting on April 30th, with its goal being to inspire heroic moments and reward those hardcore players with adept and deep sight weapons, exotic weapons, unique emblems, and the God Slayer title. Each week, the difficulty will ramp up, starting with four bosses and players being five under power, then adding a boss each week and increasing the power delta until you have eight bosses in a row and are 20 under power on May 21st. For the best rewards, you also want to complete it as fast as possible to get a platinum score. Oh, and expect a few surprises when it comes to mechanics and your team's strategies. Still some mystery about reward specifics and modifier details, but that's part of the fun. So make sure you get your raid team together or try your hand at using Fireteam Finder when Pantheon launches on April 30th. The other bit of good news was the HUD UI finally getting redesigned in the final shape, which eagle-eyed viewers might have spotted in the gameplay reveal livestream. Instead of just only having four buffs on the left side, buffs and debuffs will now live in three locations. Plus, you'll be able to see your teammates' health by the ring around their guardian rank icon. At the top, under the player's health, will be critical info. Modifiers, buffs, and debuffs that are important to completing encounters like that of white mechanics or necessary buffs. Above the super bar and weapon information will be weapon related buffs and debuffs. And on the left side will be player, subclass, and exotic buffs, debuffs, and cooldowns, now with timers on the left side so there's more visual clarity. And to better see what modifiers are active, the icons get redesigned with new shapes and colors with careful attention done for colorblind folks. With all of this, buffs and debuffs got a prioritization pass to hopefully limit what gets pushed off screen. Each HUD element still has a limit of what they can display, but now they are in three places with stricter prioritization, so the info that you need to know shouldn't be missing. But this isn't everything, and Bungie actually wants your feedback. For visual clarity and familiarity, this three-channel HUD is what is coming in the final shape, 
but they also developed and briefly showed a 4-channel version with debuffs and cooldowns on the right side of the screen. If this is something you want to see or have other feedback, just let Bungie know on social media. Other than that, a reminder that some weapons are leaving the active loot pool, such as the Cataphract GL3 Grenade Launcher and Igneous Hammer. That doesn't mean these will be completely unobtainable. It just means the Adept versions will be gone, and your path to obtaining the base version is solely through vendor legacy focusing, not activity drops. Plan accordingly for any weapons you want the most. Wrapping things up, Bungie provided some feedback and info regarding the recent special ammo crate changes in Trials, as they are trying to see what special ammo method is best for different modes in the general population. They also fixed issues regarding Onslaught Bounty and End of Activity Timer Length, and they are currently investigating issues regarding the new light kits resetting saved loadouts. Now, how about we check in with our vendors? Starting with Banshee, his only seemingly okay weapon is that annual skate with Outlaw and Multi-Kill Clip. Not something you need, but it's there if you want a solar hand cannon. And for use of your gunsmith Ingrams, this is the weekly rotation of Banshee's Foundry focusing. Turning to 801, her weekly armor sets are Red Moon Phantom for Hunters, Mimetic Savior for Titans, and Thorium Holt for Warlocks, with her weekly shaders being Cinder Char, Echoes of Io, and War Colt Rain. Over in the Eververse, you have the chest ornaments released in Season of the Dawn, a new emotes, and a myriad of old cosmetics. Everything for Dust will scroll on screen now. With that, have fun chasing those new brave weapons, and may RNG be kind. My Onslaught Guide should be out tomorrow. You know me, always late to the party, but it should be full of info you might not know about the mode or loot, and will be chock full of tips for all players. On the horizon, I have an interesting Legend Onslaught video in the works, alongside guides for new and returning players. If you'd like to show your support, just leave a like, subscribe, and maybe come join the Sundog Gaming Discord. As always, I am your Commander Pika, be kind, have fun, and I'll see you on the battlefield.